Hey everybody, welcome back to String'em Up. My name is Dave Holland. Up to this point, nearly all of the topics we've addressed on the channel have involved open chords and strumming ideas. Well, today we're going to carve out some new territory and discuss blues and rock rhythm playing and some basic improvisation. Now, even though this video will be geared specifically towards the new improvisers in the audience, I'd hope that some of the veteran players who might be watching will also jump into this lesson as a way to get back to fundamentals. So get ready to learn the Barrel House Blues rhythm pattern and beginning blues improvisations in the key of A. In the episode, What Exactly Is the Blues? I give a style profile of something called the Barrel House Blues. Well, what the heck does that mean? Well, simply, it's a style of guitar playing which mimics the sound and rhythmic stomp of boogie-woogie piano players. And it's my understanding, and feel free to check me on this if I'm wrong, that it takes its name from the barrel houses or clandestine drinking establishments, which were also known as speakeasies, that were found all over the United States, but particularly in the American South during Prohibition. And because a lot of these establishments were fly-by-night and might have to relocate at a moment's notice to avoid being raided, guitarists and not pianists entertained at these locations simply because it's much easier to pack up a guitar um, and bug out than it is to try and haul a piano. And because Boogie Woogie was all the rage at the time and what people wanted to dance to, guitarists figured out a way to make it sound like the Boogie Woogie piano. So all we need to start learning the Barrel House blues style is one finger and two strings. And uh, before we jump into this, I want to at least show you where it comes from. Um, so let's look at an A or an A7 chord. Either will work. Now, what we're going to do is deconstruct this chord to its bare bones. And the only notes we need from this formation are the lowest string with a finger on and the open string directly beneath it. So in other words, we should just play only the fifth and the fourth string. This is an A5. Now, remove any of the fingers that we're not using, and this is where we see that we get two strings, one finger. Now, grab the D chord and apply the same rule. First finger on the third string and the fourth string open. So you should only be striking the fourth and third strings at this point. And this is a D5. And then if we take the same procedure with an E chord, we should only be striking the sixth and the fifth strings. But hang on a second. Why don't we switch to the first finger or the index finger instead of the middle finger on string five, just to make it match the fingering of the A5 and the D5. So now let's play these chord forms through a blues progression in the key of A. Now, if we chug through the progression in eighth notes, it sounds more like a rock tune. And if we play a swing rhythm, it starts to sound like something resembling Chicago or Texas blues. But it's not quite what we're expecting yet. So what's missing? Well, it's the third finger. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add the third finger to the pattern. Now, if we place our third finger two frets higher on the same string as finger one, we turn these five chords into six chords. And if we alternate these two forms, we're now playing the underlying structure of the barrel house pattern. Now, if we play two strokes per finger shift, um, or an eighth note matrix, if you would prefer, it resembles Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good. And if we swing those rhythms, it kind of sounds like Wilbur Harrison's recording of Kansas City. And 
When you think about it, that's pretty darn versatile for two strings and two fingers per chord. So here's one last thought before we move on. We know what our fretting hand should be doing, but what about our picking hand? Well, in order to get that tight chugging rhythm out of your right hand, it helps to anchor your hand somehow to the top of the guitar, either by putting your little finger onto the pick guard, or maybe placing the butt of your hand on the back side of the bridge. And in fact, some people do both. And what this does is it puts us into picking mode, which limits the size of our pick motions and helps keep us from hitting stray strings, which can sabotage the chord we're executing. Remember, we're no longer in strumming mode, so anchor that picking hand. And here's an example of what uh, the different types look like. This is anchoring your little finger and picking. Here's anchoring the butt of your hand to the back side of the bridge. And this is an example of both. So I'm, I have my little finger and I'm anchoring. Remember, anchor that picking hand. Now, at this point, I'd recommend that when you can confidently play a barrel house blues in the key of A, Record yourself playing it with three to five repeats. And by the way, in musician lingo, each time you repeat, we call it a chorus. So record three to five choruses and keep it handy for the next step. Okay, now we're gonna learn what we call the A minor pentatonic scale. Minor because it has no sharps or flats and is the relative minor to the key of C major. And pentatonic because it only has five notes. In fact, pentatonic means five notes in Greek. So here's a handy fingering chart uh, for guitar players at the bottom of the screen and the written scale for everyone else. Now, keep in mind, this is untransposed, so B flat instruments take everything up a step to the key of B minor, and E flat instruments take it up to F sharp minor. Sorry about that, um, if you want to follow along. So, what do we do with this scale? Well, we improvise with it. Okay, so that means we make it up as, as we go along, right? Well, not quite. Think of improvisation in the same way you would think of language. If you just made it up as you went along, no one would be able to understand you. So for a language to work and to communicate ideas effectively, there has to be a mutually agreed upon set of rules, including alphabet, grammar, syntax, etc. In fact, in this sense, music is a language. So how do we start? Well, we learn the alphabet. In this case, the alphabet is the minor pentatonic scale. Sound familiar? Well, it should. It's the basis of most folk songs worldwide, and it's also the foundation of most American popular music. So as with all scales, learn to play it smoothly and reflexively. Now, what if we play the scale over a blues progression in quarter notes? The first thing you should notice is that every note of the scale plays nicely with every chord of the progression. That means we're working in a completely safe system. No wrong notes. So now what? At this point, it just sounds like a scale over some chords. So now let's assign ourselves some tasks to explore and get to know the ins and outs of the scale. Oh, and here's where that recording I recommended you make earlier comes in handy. Just press play and let it accompany you as you try these ideas out.
So please don't think that you have to master one of these tasks before you can move on to the next one. Do them all. Some tasks are just gonna be easier than others and some will be a lot more challenging. Let the easier ones feed the more challenging ones. And this is the same procedure as when a five-year-old child who knows their alphabet begins to learn to read by you know, putting that alphabetical information together into words. Quite simply, what we're doing is building vocabulary. And remember, the more you use that vocabulary, the more complex your sentence structures or your musical phrases can become. Now, is running quickly through these exercises going to make you sound like Billy Gibbons, Jimmy Page, or Hendrix? Well, no, but remember, it is a start. Keep at it, and soon you'll start hitting some cool phrases and delivering them with a lot of smoothness and speed. Thanks for watching String Em Up. My name's Dave Holland, and remember to like, share, and subscribe uh, if you enjoy the content on the channel. Also, feel free to leave comments and suggestions for any topics you might like to see in some future episodes. Anyway, have fun, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time. Bye.